Oh, oh, ah, uh, it's your boy, Doc Reed. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, wrong show. All right, listen, you know me. We're back to talk about these relationships one more game. Uh, but as usual, we got to take care of some housekeeping. You know how we do. Get this book. If you're new to Doc Reed, this is my normal spiel. This is my gift from me to you. Forbidden Secrets of the Goodie Box, which your father didn't tell you and your mother did not know. Uh, Deborah is like one, many of my clients. She is very smart. She is very beautiful. She's got everything in the world going on for her, except the fact that she can't make her relationships work, which is very frustrating to Deborah because uh, she is so intelligent. And she's like, I should be able to do this. It's not rocket science, but... Yeah, keep getting the deadbeat guys, and she has to realize what she needs to change. And then that's where she meets your boy, Doc Reed. Yeah, I'll make a cameo in the book. Anyway, it's vanity. I get it, but it's allowed. So you are a diamond. So I need you to make sure that you go to my website, and I do have a picture. Well, I don't have to put it up because... I always put it up and I don't even know why I do that. I think I used to do that because I was on Periscope. But go to ChristopherReed.org, download the um, Kindle or the PDF version of the book, and I guarantee you it will help you. It will bless you. Now that that's done, I want to talk to those of you who are, oh, yeah, this is, I see this a lot. and It's, it's very frustrating for me. Your boy, your uncle, your cousin, your brother, whatever you want to call me, Doc to see women acting like they are exclusive like the guy has actually asked you hey i want you to only see me and you have shut off everybody else now he has not asked you that he has not in any way okay said that he wants to see you exclusively However, you are acting like you are in an exclusive relationship. That is a huge problem. Okay. And that is going to typically end up with you getting your feelings hurt or you being disappointed because you are doing as grandma my name would say, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. Is he putting all his eggs in the basket? Or maybe he's got two eggs in the basket. And maybe he's got three eggs outside of the basket. But all five of yours are in the basket. Problem. Okay. Um, so what I mean by this, you, you don't see anyone else. And I get it, you know, your thing is, I don't, I'm not comfortable talking to multiple guys at the same time. I'm just not that way. It wasn't raised like that. Um, and I get that. But we're not saying you got to be sleeping with five guys or three guys. Nobody said that. Okay. What we're saying is the fact that you allow yourself to be taken out shown a nice time and you know entertain some conversations you're not leading people on or none of that and so you spend all your time with this guy and really you don't do anything you don't do anything different than you would do as if it was just him i mean you do everything the same and you go for months doing this okay giving him all the benefits of being in an exclusive relationship because hey here here's how guys are wired if he gets all the benefits from let's just say working in your company okay use that analogy if he gets all the benefits of working with your company but he doesn't have to be employed with your company why do i care about being employed by you. I don't, I, you still pay me. Uh, I still get full medical. I still get full dental. I still get full vision. I get everything. And guess what? I don't have to show up to work. I don't have to be in there at eight. I mean, they do, whoever your employees are, but I don't, I, I still get all the amazing benefits. So I have no incentive to want to to, to perform and, and do all this other extra stuff. Why would I want to do that? I don't, yeah. So now when you do ask him, because it's, it's something that 
you want. It's something that concerns you. It's, it's, it's something that obviously would make you feel special. So when you do ask him, what's, what's, what's going on? What are we doing? Where's this going? He'll give you, uh, you know, I don't want to rush things. I've been hurt. I used the hurt before. Yeah, I used the I've been hurt thing for, hmm, how long did I use that? I got away with that for about a year that I was hurt. I mean, it started out as true. I was hurt. But then it just became a line that I just used that worked. Hey, you know, I've been hurt. And if you want to go out and have a nice time, cool. If you don't, you know, I, hey, I respect that. You know, of course, they want to go out and have a nice time. And I wasn't obligated to do anything. That was a long, long time ago. Many of you know I've been married uh, over 22 years, so that was, but, you know. So he'll give you these little, because, come on, we as men, we're, we're, we're always testing. We're always trying to, yeah, how, what, what can I get away with? What, what, what is she going to accept? And if we're not held accountable, if we're not held to a, a higher standard, you know, what's, what's the saying I used to hear, always hear from Les Brown? No one rises to low expectations. So if your expectations are low, mediocre, why in the world? Like I said, I'm not trying to get employed when I'm getting everything that I want. So what you do is this. You try to be patient because what, what incentive do you have to be patient? Well, let's see. Uh, he, he is a nice guy. He's a, he's a nice guy. He does take you out. Y'all have spent some time together. You might have been uh, intimate. You might be actually having sex and, and doing all of that. Okay, let's just, let's just be real. You know, that's just what we do out here. I'm not going to just feed you a bunch of malarkey. So, and, and, and because you are intimate, that, that has complicated things where the making the distance is, is, is not that easy because now we got a lot more involved. We're deeper emotionally. So we're, we're intertwined here. And so your thing is, you know, I don't want to rush. And, and you know, the idea that, you know, he actually might be talking to somebody else. You don't really want to entertain that. So we can, let's live in the fantasy of this is, is, is what I want it to be. No, he hasn't technically asked me, but he, he, he acts like he really cares about me. He acts like he really loves me. So let's just, let's do some Cinderella. Let's do some Sleeping Beauty. Let's, let's do some fairy tale stuff, okay, to just put ourselves there. And let's just kind of uh, zone out and just be in the moment. Because don't, you don't want to push him. You, you, you don't want to, you know, frustrate him. At least that's what you tell yourself. Because... God forbid you you push and you 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 go through all of this and you push him away because we know how you feel about men when they fade to black on you and it's like what's going on. So we don't want to do all of that. We want to acknowledge that he's a great guy. You want to show your appreciation and you feel like by not pushing. You are going to seem like uh, uh, somebody he really wants to be with. Now, there's a certain amount of truth to that because nobody likes a nag. No, no, you, you hear it all the time. Nobody, man, she's nagging. Nobody, nobody wants that, right? But there is a way that you, as a woman, can let him know that this ain't what I signed up for to to be on a perpetual. Just kind of, I call it like being in dating purgatory. You're not really in, but you're not really totally out. Kind of like in this no man zone. And so, but there are ways that you can let a guy know that, yeah, I'm not just sitting around waiting because I hear this all the time. This is why I created the DVD, why he married her instead of you. It's because after you do all this waiting in purgatory, and you know, you you finally get fed up, then you you hear that he married someone else six months later. Now, here's six months later, why didn't she have to wait as long as you waited? It's a good question. It's a very valid question. That one that you should ask. Well, it's because that she wasn't about to put up with all his BS. And you know. When in, when in those times with him, when you, 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 you had your moments where you really did get fed up and you said, wait a minute, hold on, I've, I've had enough. 
and you you probably I'm done. I'm I'm done with this. It's over. I'm out. I've had it. You blow up, and he says something to you to reel you back in. He tells you no. He tells you how much he cares about you. He tells you how much he loves you, and it feels good. It, you know, it, it makes you feel special for him to run after you and to chase you. And say, listen, no, 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 wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want you to, listen, okay, I get it, I, no, no, I I understand why you're upset, I do, I, I'm not, I do understand it, but you gotta understand what I'm, I'm saying, is, it's not that I don't want to be with you, huh, <laughs> yeah, man, listen, I get it, it's not that I don't want to be with you, okay, it's just, just, can you just get, can you, can you just give me some time, please, okay, I mean, do we have to rush this? The, 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 do we have to rush this card? Ah, that's a good one, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Do we have to rush it? And um, the reason I say it's a good one, because it works a lot. It does. It, it keeps you still holding on. That buy him at least another, maybe if you play it right, it might buy him another six months. He's, you're still not going to be exclusive. You know, I, you know, I just want you to be clear. But he bought him some time. And I, you know, please know my heart. I'm not trying to be cynical. I'm not trying to, but I'm I'm I gotta give it to you like it is, ladies. I'm pulling back the curtain and letting you see what's going on. Okay, because trust and believe. This you must know. When a guy really wants to be exclusive, he's not wasting a lot of time. He's not because he doesn't want anybody else to be with you, to be what he wants, to be with someone that he wants to only have exclusively. Oh, no, 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 no. So if you're out here in purgatory six months, a year, he don't want to be exclusive. I don't care what he tells you. He's buying time. He's really buying time. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. It, 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 his options are he can see other people. And, 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 and if he sees somebody, what are you going to say? No, seriously. If, if you find out that he is, say you look out on social media or something, and you, and you see him like, I don't know, hugged up with somebody or he made a comment to somebody that you thought was crossing the line. I'm not sure what line because y'all not in an exclusive relationship. So there is no line. But if he does any of that, what can you say about it? You can get mad. You can get in your feelings all day, every day. But when you go to him, did he lie? Because typically, here's the deal. If, he's, if he says he's not seeing anyone else, but listen, I ain't seeing nobody. You the only one I'm seeing. I don't want nobody else. Okay, let's 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 dissect that a little bit. You're the only one I'm seeing. I don't want anybody else. Then why aren't we exclusive? Because you, that sounds that right there. That's pretty much the definition of being exclusive. But you're not exclusive. Okay. So I don't know if he's if he's telling you that. But he, he might not be telling you that exactly, but he may not. All right, listen, I, I ain't seen nobody. And that part might be true. But ask him, are you open to seeing somebody else? If, if, if someone came across your path that you really had some serious chemistry with, are you going to entertain that? That he might not have told you. Or you maybe you have not asked that question because maybe you, I, you might not want to know the answer to it. You know, sometimes I got to tell the truth in love. I just do because I'm, I'm, I'm held to that, that standard. Okay, so here's the deal. Like I said, did he lie to you? Did he mislead you in any way? Just because he's spending time with you, a lot of time with you. And just because he's telling you he, he cares about you. Is he technically misleading you? He can spend time with whomever he wants to. He can tell whoever he wants to that he cares about them. Like I said, if, if you don't know that he's not seeing anybody else and yeah, I know he can still say he's exclusive with you and cheat. OK, yeah, sure. Anybody can do that. But at the end of the day, um, the exclusivity thing means something. It does. It, it means you're special. It means that out of all the other possibilities that I, I've had, 
that you're the one that I have decided that I want to spend my time with. Has he been unfaithful? If, if, you, if you find out that he's been spending some nights, having some conversations, has he been unfaithful? No, he has not. Because he hasn't. By the same token. Now, trust, everything that I've said about him, you can do. You, you could hang out with whomever you want to. You could have whatever phone calls, conversations you want to. You can go out on many dates as you want to, but you're not doing it. You're not exclusive, but you could. So it, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. So essentially, he has told you how he feels about you by not asking you to be exclusive. Now, I'm not talking about if you've been with talking to somebody for two days. Okay, come on. Seriously, let's, you know. I'm saying if you've been talking to somebody for, you know, several months, a guy knows. I'm just trying to tell you, ladies, I don't care what he tells you. A guy knows. What, what he wants to do. And if, you, if you're if you still holding on and acting like it's exclusive, then that's a problem. Okay, so the biggest issue is you sit and wait, obviously. Um, you don't like seeing more than one person. Maybe there's a belief system there that that makes it look like you're a loose woman. Uh, that you're out here just, but you know what you're doing. You know that you ain't out here sleeping with everybody, so who cares what people think and how it looks? And at the end of the day, I'm just trying to tell you that's a big mistake because you're setting yourself up for some serious um, heartbreak and letdown if things if things go the, in another direction. Now, like I said before, he's very comfortable in this position. He knows, one, you're not going anywhere. He knows that whenever you say you're leaving, he can talk you out of it. Uh, but at the same time, he knows he's still free. He's still out here on the open market. He can still do what he wants to. So he has a really serious, uh, a, a, a real lopsided situation to his benefit. And so at the end of the day, you need someone that's going to challenge you. Someone, well, let, let me say it this way. He needs someone that's going to challenge him. Because we as men need a challenge. And what do I mean? We, we need somebody that's not going to put up with our crap. We need somebody that when we try to give you these little BS lines about, you know, oh, I've been hurt and. You know, why we got to rush? What is this? What's the title? We need somebody who's not going to stand for that crap. Okay, not, you don't have to tell us, oh, that's crap. And you don't have to go off on us because that's not really the right angle either. But you need to let us know you're not the one. You not going to allow yourself to settle for a situation that it's only about that really where I can be selfish and get what I want and you don't get anything um, someone who essentially will not let us run game because hey we'll try to run game if, if you allow us to yeah sure we'll try to run game on you uh, someone who is going to hold us accountable based off of our actions that is what we as men need, ladies. Now, for you in this situation, like I said before, you need someone that can hold you accountable because, you know, it's, it's very difficult when you, you've developed feelings for someone. Like I said, if you've been intimate with them and you're not in this committed relationship, but you feel like you are and you're hoping that he is not seeing anyone else. It's, 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 it's challenging to pull away. It's challenging to choose you, make you first, make you the priority you need to. So you may need somebody there that you can help, you know, somebody that can help hold you accountable, talk to you. Just make sure that it's somebody who is not just going to be a cheerleader per se, but can really kind of help you navigate pastor, preacher, teacher, coach, therapist, counselor, whatever. Sometimes family members, eh, you know, they love you, 
but sometimes their advice is some of us good, some of us not so great. So if you find yourself, if, you, if you've heard, listened to this and you know that I was describing you, because I hear it all the time, you may feel like, well, how in the world you know so much about what I'm going through? Because, well, first of all, you're not the only one going through it. There's a lot of women, more women than I then should be going through it. And if you heard yourself in this video today, please, please, please stop it. If you need help stopping it, if you if you need help, you know, not continuing to act exclusive when you know you're not in a committed relationship, get at me. That's what I do. Free consultation, 30 minutes. We'll talk about your situation. You give me all the details that's going on. And then I'm going to tell you, this is the program. This is the plan that I'm going to put you on to help you get out of that situation and get what you deserve. Okay. Because first of all, one of the reasons you've stayed in this situation so long, I got to tell you, is you don't know who you are. There's no way. There's absolutely zero way that you would allow yourself to stay in this situation if you knew your true value and how value, valuable you are and how valuable you would be to someone else. And the reason I can say that is this, like with the employment analogy, would you allow somebody, would you pay somebody to work for you, so to speak, and they don't necessarily do any work? But you're giving them full benefits? No, 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 no. You wouldn't do that in a million years. So the fact that you can emphatically say, no, I wouldn't do that. Oh, my God. I wouldn't even let my family members do that. No. Let's me know that you don't know who you are and your worth and your value in a relationship because you continually giving it away. You continually paying wages for no work. Let's just say not the work that matters, all right? So hopefully this has blessed you. Hopefully this has helped you. Your boy, Doc Reed, I'm always out here looking for you. And like I said, make sure you get the book, Forbidden Secrets of the Goodie Box, which your father didn't tell you, your mother didn't know, because Deborah, she's just like this. She's just like the type of woman that I've described. She, oh, she's made so many mistakes. Uh, Lord, just, Lord bless her. But she finally, she finally got it together. It was hard. It was hard. She had to go through some things. She did. She went through. Deborah went through. But she came out on the other side. Much better. She did. So, all right. Listen, I'm out of here. And like I said, if I was talking to you, get at me. We can talk talk about it, chop it up, and um, set you on the path to where you need to be. All right. Listen, I'm out of here. It's your boy, Doc Reed. I'll holler at y'all. Peace.